This is Everyday Watercolor. Learn to paint watercolor in 30 days by Jenna Rainey. And as usual, my cat has decided, oh, maybe they're going to actually make it through this. We will see. So where some books are a set of inspirations or a set of ideas, in this case, it's a step-by-step -step over 30 days. And, you know, you could say, are you going to be a watercolor master in 30 days? Probably not. But at least if you get the basics down, then that lets you explore further and do a more advanced study in whatever area you're in. So it has a little introduction about what kind of tools to get started with and how the different kinds of brushes work and that sort of stuff. So a nice set of basics and then some basics about color theory and how you compose items to give it a pleasant feel. But then we get into the actual step-by-step -step instructions. So we start with very basic stuff, how to put the paint down, how to make it go from dark to light. And then you get into making shapes, so curves and circles. And as you can see, it probably won't take you too long to sit here and making circles and squares. So the aim is not to spend all day long studying this, but if you've got like half an hour, and it tells you here like this one's 20 to 30 minutes. So I would say about half an hour to sit down do some practicing, figure out how different colors work, figure out how to do layouts. And, you know, some of these intro ones about how to make leaves might not be um, an ending result that you would share with someone, but I would actually find that very pretty to put onto a note card or something like that. So it's not necessarily like these things are wasted effort where you're just doing grids after grids after grids. Some of these even introductory things are ones that you could put onto note cards or put onto a little piece of paper and give to someone and they'd probably be pretty happy with it. So it talks about how to put things into the background, how to put things into the foreground, how to create lovely combinations of colors on your thing, how to deal with the light shorts and make this look like you know there's shadows in there and light. So we're only on day 11 and we're already into some pretty um, how complicated is the wrong word, but some kinds of concepts which are going to serve you well no matter what you're painting. And you might say, oh, well, I don't like painting cactuses, but that's not the point. It's not that you want to learn how to study cactuses necessarily, although, you know, they're very pretty, but when you learn those kinds of techniques, you can then apply it to whatever it is you want to paint, covered bridges or cats or dogs or anything else. You know, it talks about painting in sections so that each section is able to um, dry so that the next colors don't go mushing into it, which is a very valuable thing to learn. Talks about how complementary colors really help images pop, how to add little fine lines into the watercolor so you have a wash of color. So there are, again, all sorts of really useful techniques in here. And even if a particular lesson isn't drawing something that you're interested in drawing, undoubtedly you'll be able to use that technique in your own works later to create the kinds of images that you're after. And even if you're not someone who's going to want to do detailed kinds of work, it's still good to know how to do it because even if you're mostly doing abstract or very loose kinds of paintings, there still could be times where a little bit of detail really makes it pop. And it's just good to be able to know how to do that, even if you don't end up using it all the time. So we're talking about using gray scales and how the different kinds of shading works to help give the eye a sense of dimension. And then we're, you know, now getting into some fairly complicated kinds of drawings. And we're on day 25. And so now she's getting to more full scenes. You know, there's been a lot of cactuses in here, so we can tell the kinds of things she likes to do. But again, it's not that you're learning to paint her artwork. It's that you're learning the techniques and skills which will serve you well for whatever you're trying to do. But if you happen to like deserts and cactuses, then you're in extra luck here because you're going to find all sorts of pieces in here that have those kinds of images for you. All right. Although, you know, it says final jungle piece. So if you like parrots, you're all set too. <laughs> all right. So the aim here is to learn basic techniques, shading, color use, that kind of thing, but in a step-by-step -step manner where you spend about half an hour a day. Most of these were about half an hour worth of work. Some of the later ones get into a little longer, an hour to an hour and a half, but you don't have to do it all at once. You can do a half hour and then put it aside and then do the next half hour, you know, the next day or whatever. And in general, the aim will be that at the end of about a month, 
you'll have a good roster of skills to then let you work on whatever kind of watercolor you enjoy. So for a person who likes a nice steady approach that guides you through and building on the skills you've learned before, this is a good book. The images are lovely and the techniques that you use can be applied to whatever kind of style that you're interested in. So uh, good luck and I recommend this one.